Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Good day to you, my friend, and welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so much for letting us be part of your day. My Bible is open right now to the book of Hebrews in chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3, if you can, turn in your own copy of God's Word with me right now. You may also want to get something on which to jot a couple of notes as we do our studies. I try most every day to give a very clear outline of the passage before us. And that outline may help you review the passage later on. Also, you will have the means then at your disposal to jot down our contact information because I want to give you a free sample packet which contains one each of all of our English gospel tracts. And my announcer will provide the contact information at the end of the broadcast. But let me start the broadcast this way. Not long ago, my office manager here at Bible Tracks Incorporated, he and I were talking about the toys we had as kids. Sam is 55, I'm 62, so we played with toys that basically required no batteries, again, for the most part. Well, anyway, we talked about how the toys were all labeled as to where they were made. Most of the toys we had were labeled made in Japan. And that label back in the 1950s and 60s indicated things to us. Now, I say all that because even today, I find myself checking labels on things. I do it on clothes, electronic equipments, and car parts that I get to repair my car. It's a habit of mine. But dear friend, labels are also part of the Christian life. As we come to chapter 3 of Hebrews in verse 1, it opens with some labels. Up to this point, the original readers of the book of Hebrews have only been referred to by the pronoun we. Now, though, the human penman, whoever he or she was, openly identifies the first audience. It's really wise for us as believers to remind ourselves as to just who we are. We need to do that from time to time because you and I so easily get ourselves thinking in one of two extremes. We either think of ourselves too highly or we think of ourselves too low. Friend, let's allow God to label us today and own those labels and rejoice in them. Well, I have a gospel tract in my hand. Now, a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation that tells the reader how to know Jesus Christ as Savior. I mentioned that sample packet here. I want you to get a sample packet, and it will be, uh, among other tracks, this one entitled Memorial Stones. Memorial Stones. You've seen a cemetery with the grave markers that are there, particularly interesting is to go to a military cemetery where all the grave markers are identical in those straight rows. A cemetery like that, those memorial stones that are there remind us that death is certain, death can be sudden, and death can frankly come to the old and the young alike. And then this gospel track reminds us that death is coming, but we need to be ready for what comes after death. There is an eternity It's either going to be spent in heaven or in hell. Here's a great, great gospel track. Let me send it to you, please. It's called Memorial Stones. It'll be one of the tracks that's in that sample packet that I want to send you. Now, please know, dear friend, that Bible Tracks Incorporated is reaching across the world with the gospel, and right now we are enabling a million tracts to be printed in a particular Muslim country, and as a result of that, we fully expect to see 80,000 people to get involved in a Bible correspondence course, and of those 80,000, a large percentage of them will receive Jesus Christ as Savior. If you would like to help us in this cause, please visit our website or contact our office. Again, my announcer at the end of the broadcast will make all that information known to you. All right, take your Bible, please. 
If you have pen and paper ready, our Bibles are open to Hebrews 3, just verse 1. It says this, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. We're going to stop right there. I will not give you the broad view of Hebrews chapter 3 today. I'll do that on Wednesday's broadcast, but look for a second at chapter 2 and verse 17. Chapter 2 verse 17 says this, Wherefore in all things it behooved him, that's Jesus, to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Now, notice please those two words described Jesus in that verse. He's a merciful and faithful high priest. I point this out because starting here in chapter 3 and going through chapter 5, the Holy Spirit moves the penman to elaborate on those two words. Starting in chapter 3, Jesus is going to be seen as the faithful builder. Then starting at the end of chapter 4, Jesus is going to be the merciful high priest. But our focus today is on just verse 1 of chapter 3 and the labels of the first audience, the first congregation to whom the book of Hebrews was written. By the very name of the book, the book of Hebrews, we know that the first readers were Jews. They were ethnic Jews. Now, that much I will assume as we walk through verse 1. There are four labels here. Label number one, they are called brethren. Brethren. Now, I will get to that word holy before the word brethren in just a minute, but let me focus on that word brethren first. By labeling the readers as brethren or brothers, we know that they are believers in Jesus. They were included in the penman's spiritual family. Now, dear believer friend, you belong to my spiritual family. I belong to yours. Let us never be ashamed to own our family members. Amen? All right, that's label number one, brethren. But now, label number two is that word holy. By the way, Later on in chapter 6 of the book of Hebrews, the word translated holy here in verse 1 will be translated by the word saint. Yes, saint. As brethren, the readers were born into God's family. They were born again ones. Now, this is something they were given as a gift by God's grace. Well, so too were they by grace given the label of holy or saint. No, 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 they were not dead, nor were they granted this label because of some church council had given it to them. They were granted this label by God himself. These believers, by their faith in Jesus' finished work at Calvary's cross, were adorned with the righteousness of Christ. They were called by God saints. They were called by God holy ones. You and I are called to live a holy life, and we falter in that. You do, I do, we know that. But as our God sees us, he sees us through the shed blood of Jesus. He sees us wearing the righteousness of Christ. Therefore, our Heavenly Father says, you are my child. You are my holy brethren. Praise God for that. Label number three, looking back here, verse one of chapter three says, wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. We are partakers. This simply means that these readers had already come into a partnership with somebody. They were already sharing something with another person. So just what were they sharing? Well, verse one says they were sharing the heavenly calling. Since all believers share in this calling, this calling cannot be the calling to be a pastor or a missionary. This heavenly calling is the calling to salvation. And by the way, remember, remember with me right now, when you read uh, these words, you were partaker of the heavenly calling. Do you remember the time that you were called? When we read over in chapter 9 of the book of Hebrews, you're going to see that these folk are simply called the called ones, the called. Tell me, do you remember the day that you were called in your heart and soul and mind by Jesus and you responded to be saved? Do you remember how by faith you turned your heart and life away from sin and sinful patterns that you were practicing? Do you remember the day when by faith you turned your heart and life to Jesus? You began to follow him, live for him. Oh, friend, all 
saved people have been called by God's grace. Perhaps, perhaps God is calling you right now, today, to believe on him to be saved. Do so. Don't wait till the program is over. Right now, turn the radio off, bow your head and heart, and cry out for mercy from God. He will abundantly pardon because Jesus paid your sin debt by his blood. Label number one, brethren. Label number two, holy. Label number three, partakers. Now label number four, you and I are called professing ones. Again, I go back to verse one. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. You and I are professing ones, those of us who know Christ. Verse one ends this way, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession. That word profession comes from the same Greek root word from which we get over in John, 1 John 1, 9, uh, about confessing our sin. You remember 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That word confess And that word profess come from the same root word, have the foundational idea behind it, which means to say the same thing. The Greek word that's foundational to both the word profession here and confession there means to say the same thing. People, Christians who practice genuine confession are those who say the same thing about their sin that God does. They don't slough it off. They declare it to be exactly what God says it is. Here in Hebrews 3, the reader who was a partaker in the heavenly calling had professed Jesus Christ. They had owned Jesus for who he was, just as he declared himself to be, just as he defined himself to be. They didn't confess him in a reinvented Jesus as they wanted him to be. Now, dear listener friend, you and I I can call ourselves Christians all we want, but unless there was a day when we consciously, by God's grace, called onto him and believed in him, and we did believe on him the way he declared himself to be, and in our believing, we declared in our minds and in our hearts Jesus to be for us exactly what the Bible says he is, our Savior from sin, the Lamb of God, the resurrected Lord, the Creator God who gave his life as the payment for our sins. Unless we profess Jesus to be these things for us, then we are not saved. But as I said today, we can be saved. Dear listener, do you know Jesus Christ is Savior? Or have you reinvented him? Perhaps you don't like what some TV preacher says about him or some radio preacher says about him or the person at the church you attend says about him because you want Jesus to be the way you want him. Forget what some preacher says. Go to the word of God. Go to the gospels. Let Jesus declare himself to be who he says he is. And unless you're willing to accept him on his terms, you cannot have his salvation. That's just the way it is. You will die in your sin. But today, if you will profess Jesus for who he is, eternal God, creator God, who came to earth, took on flesh, and died for your sin, receive him today on his terms, and you will be saved. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 309- 828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.